Here's a circle with six points drawn on the edge, and we want to connect these points in as many possible ways to divide the circle into as many possible regions as we can. And so let's get started. I'll draw these in, and I'll use a straight edge in this case to try to get them pretty straight. We'll get a hexagonal shape around the outer edge, and it doesn't have to be a regular hexagon, that's okay. We just need to connect as many possible lines to get as many possible regions. That's our value of n, or our value of um, the number of regions for n equals 6. So then I start connecting the points in here. Um, actually, this will be easier if I'm systematic about it, make sure I don't leave any out. Okay. All right, now a few more. And is that all? Oh, I think there's one more down here. Bottom edge along there. And that's all. Now let's count the regions. Now um, let's look back real quick at this one. Remember, we're expecting 32. We see this pattern with um, two points, then three, four, five, and now we're at six. And we see these numbers that we were getting before. Two regions, four regions, eight, 16. So we're expecting 32. So let's count them. And I'll put a red dot in each one to indicate that it's counted. And again, we'll be systematic. One, two, three, four, five, six around the edge, and adjacent to those, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now kind of at the corners of the star shape, we'll count 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and then the, oh, and here, 23, 24. And then in the interior here, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. We end up with 31 regions. And you can't do it any, any differently. You can't get 32. Even if you take these points on the corner and move them around in different ways so that these lines change position slightly, you can't slice this up into more than 31 regions. And that's actually a little bit disturbing because when we, when we look at this pattern, it just seems so rock solid. 2, 4, 8, 16. It seems to be so firmly established. Each number is exactly twice the one before it. And it seems like it is established, but it is not. 32 here is an error. That's not the case. It ends up being 31. And you can see that. You can count them there. You can try it on your own. You'll never get 32 regions. Now the whole point of that is just to show you this one fact. That just because a pattern exists does not mean the pattern is firmly established. Recognizing a pattern is not the same thing as proving that the pattern always holds. So hopefully this demonstrates to you the need for mathematical proof. We don't really know something mathematically until it has been proven rigorously with valid logic. Just seeing the pattern inductively does not establish it. Now most of mathematics is done, most of the mathematical exploration that is done, is done inductively. People are, are looking for patterns. The mathematicians who are coming up with new theories are looking for patterns, but they do not ever just publish the pattern that they have simply found. They go back and find a rigorous deductive proof of their idea. And once an idea is rigorously proven with deductive reasoning, then it is considered to be mathematically established. And again, the technique that we're going to look at, mathematical induction, is a form of deductive reasoning. It's considered logically rigorous and valid logically and mathematically.